so uh, uh, good evening everyone uh, i thank the uh, ieee computer society uh, student branch shreyas college of engineering for giving me an opportunity uh, to deliver a session on cloud computing fundamentals so before beginning with uh, uh, i will try to put this session uh, very fundamental so that the beginners uh, will get a very good understanding of what cloud computing is so moving on what exactly cloud computing at the nutshell is so when um, we speak with a lot of people on what exactly cloud computing is people always say it is something storing on internet cloud computing is some storage space but i say cloud computing is nothing but placing computing on internet in simple words i say computing on internet so what does this mean so when we speak about computing we speak about executing our programs which says we require a deployment environment which says we require an underlying computer infrastructure which also says we also require a storage space to store our program and data so finally as i said cloud computing is an internet uh, computing on internet we are able to get all these services from the cloud computing so when you look at the slide we can find it cloud computing is the delivery of computing services which includes servers storage databases networking analytics intelligence security and what not so we could get any of the computing need through the cloud computing so because of this cloud computing we are able to get the resources whatever we want and we are able to do whatever the innovation we want as well we are able to achieve the economies of scale economies of the scale means the amount of resources which we want we are able to get to get in fraction of time so by using this cloud computing so the question comes how do we procure it and what exactly cost for us so the cloud computing is an utility computing model where we are not going to purchase the resources which we want but we are going to subscribe those resources when i say a subscription model we are going to pay for the resources only when we actually use so this make this actually is going to give an economy of the scale so this reduces the operational cost for an organization or an individual who is using the cloud computing we are able to scale our businesses as per the need with the help of cloud computing say for example an organization is not using cloud computing their business has scaled up enormously in a short span so when the business has expanded they actually require the computing infrastructure so procuring the computing infrastructure and placing the infrastructure in place for an organization takes lot of time but when an organization starts using cloud computing as and when they require more computing resources they can procure them immediately so moving on the characteristics of the cloud computing so we could see five major characteristics of the cloud computing the first one speaks about on demand self service what does this on demand self service says it says when an organization or individual is using cloud computing and when as i mentioned i require more resources say computing more resources say storage more resources say network and individual intervention is not required the cloud computing itself is going to perform its own self service provisioning and is going to you know provide the required resources 
so with just raising a request just with a button click we are able to get the resources whatever we want and we call this as on demand self service provisioning an internal or an intermediate intervention is not actually required then speaking on the second characteristics which speaks about broad network access so when i say cloud computing which can be which is scalable and when it is scalable the cloud computing infrastructure is not present at a single place but widely distributed across the world accessing those resources require a very good network access and cloud computing will provide those the required broad network access we can have our own virtual private network we can access through a public network we can access through a lesal lines but we can access to the resources provided by the cloud computing this is one of the important and interesting characteristics of the cloud computing then the third important characteristics is the resource pooling as said the cloud computing is highly scalable and when i say highly scalable okay. this means enormous okay. number of enormous resources are actually available widely distributed across the globe yeah, yeah, no, no, no. and are actually pooled together Sir? and provided to a subscriber subscriber on demand yeah, normal ga so we call this as resource pooling gurinche cheppan sir padike villa varra and when i say cloud computing highly scalable the cloud computing infra is not actually <laughs> developed by using <laughs> A super computer, but actually is developed by using the commodity hardware. Computer society chapter ni. What is this commodity hardware? Good evening to all the participants and good evening. Commodity hardware is nothing but the low cost hardware which we use like our laptops, desktops, etc. And all these low cost computing resources are joined together to perform the complex computing for. the users are for the Adhe subscribers Adhe. moving on to the fourth important characteristic i think sir the rapid elasticity so here we are using the term elasticity yes, sir. than scalability what oh, does no. this elasticity means scalability says we can expand as and how we require we can increase Yes, sir. We can get the resources that what we want, but the next minute when we are not using those resources, those resources will be released from the user. So as and when we want, we can expand. As and when we do not want, we can release those resources, so that we actually pay only for the resources that which we are using. So this is actually going to. help the subscribers in reducing their operational costs moving on to the fifth important characteristics we call it as a measured service as already i mentioned cloud computing is nothing but computing as a service over an internet emo sir nen nen work chese padutunna whatever the service that which we get is measured dan tarvata it is measured because we pay as per what actually we use and these are the five important characteristics of a cloud computing technology or the cloud computing environment that which we use so the people may ask why we need to migrate on cloud how these characteristics are actually going to help me or my business maybe principal sir one thing to factor is by migrating on to the cloud okay sir an organization can actually concentrate on their actual business instead fine, of fine. taking the headache of procuring the it infrastructure so elaborating sir. this sentence okay fine sir if an organization is ah. using okay, is developing its own it uh, infrastructure mana class they have to spend lot of time man power in procuring the it infrastructure but migrating on to the cloud will be taken hey, care by the cloud service provider 
the organization can actually concentrate on their core business what exactly they are meant for so this advantage has made many of the organizations to migrate onto the cloud but there are also the issues there are also concerns for organizations and users when they were the, when they thought of migrating to the cloud the very first concern that comes is the ownership for an organization that an important asset is their data and the data lies within their it infra when an organization migrated onto the cloud so their applications their data their process will reside in the cloud computing and cloud computing infra means the data process of an organization are lying at a third party place which gives an illusion to the subscriber or the user that they lose the ownership of their data their data is in the hands of the third party so this is one of the major concern so moving on sir sir how to know the challenges as just i mentioned there are many no, more challenges no, 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 manam maatlade va ayle ayle the first one is about the security and privacy coming to the security and the privacy as mentioned the organizations were concerned about the security and the privacy of the data the cloud computing is a shared environment cloud computing supports multi tenancy multi tenancy means more than one organization are going to share the common resources so when an organization data is stored on the shared pool of resources the security and privacy of their data and processes is a concern there are good number of security policies have come but still this is a challenge for the cloud sir. service provider to convince sir, the subscriber sir. okay sir the another important challenge is Fine. interoperability here interoperability means when an organization want to migrate onto the cloud not not here the point is an organization may migrate their complete applications and data onto the cloud or they might migrate the part of the data part of the processes onto the cloud and sometimes an organization might procure the cloud services few from one provider and a few from other provider then the issue of interoperability comes a service provider may not sync his applications his services with the services of other provider or a service provider may not sync his services with our own services so this is one of the major challenge moving on to the third one which speaks about portability say now we migrated our processes and data and applications onto the cloud and at later we want to move back to our own it infra or we want to move our own it infra on to the cloud there comes some of the issues in migrating the applications from our own infra to the cloud or from one cloud to the other cloud then moving on the another important challenge is the computing performance the performance of the cloud may not remain same all the time based on the availability of the resources as i mentioned the cloud supports multi tenancy the underlying cloud infra will be shared by many subscribers 
based on the subscriber workload the computing performance varies moving on to the last challenge which is reliability and availability as mentioned an organization has migrated onto a cloud so migrating onto the cloud all our applications data and processes will be there with the cloud service provider and the cloud computing is a distributed computing model which completely relies on the network and say if the network fails say if we do not have an connectivity then we fail to run our applications we fail to get our data so this is one of the major concern which we call it as availability so when we migrate onto the cloud we always expect our data and the processes to be available all the time with us and for that we need to have a reliability so whomever the cloud service provider we have chosen we should rely on the service provider that the services the processes and the data are available all the time and we say cloud computing as a ubiquitous computing model which says which is an anywhere any time computing model so we can connect to our processes we can connect to our data by using any of the computing terminal connected with an internet we are able to do our process so these are the challenges there with the cloud computing and today many of the service providers have overcome so now we are speaking about cloud collaboration which says some of the services from one provider some of the services from the other provider and we can run our applications moving on the major advantages of the cloud computing so the first major advantage is flexibility as just i spoke we connect to our computing migrated onto the cloud through internet using any of the device a device may be a thin client it no, might be a thin client it might be a laptop it might be a mobile it might be a desktop irrespective of the geo location so we might be there in us you might be there in europe you might be there in india anywhere in the world we can connect to our systems we can connect to our data and we can yeah, yeah. you know perform our business processes so we call this as flexibility moving on to the second benefit the disaster recovery as said so whenever we are using computing for our business processes mare adhe emanna undochcha ani the computing might fail lock meeting an undi and we require a recovery mechanism and there is a very sophisticated disaster recovery mechanism yeah, available with the cloud just to elaborate on Any this meeting pakana three dots whatever the data at the top just a lock meeting an option stored on the cloud the cloud maintains at least three copies of the same data we call this as data replication and the cloud maintains the replication factor minimum 3 say if any system which holds our data goes wrong then we can recover our data which is present on a different node or a different terminal so this way we have a very sophisticated disaster recovery mechanism available with cloud moving on to the third benefit which speaks about automatic software updates as we know when you are working with our machines our operating systems get updated our application softwares gets updated 
we require to update the licenses we require to update the new versions all these updations will be done by the cloud computing on its own by using its characteristic self service provisioning so we are not required to worry about the licensing we are not required to look into the dates of license expiries and moving on moving on the next important benefit is pay as you go as already i mentioned we pay only for the services which we use which is which is going to reduce our operational cost moving on to the next benefit which is an increased collaboration so because of migrating onto the cloud we can get we can subscribe to huge number of services which is going to benefit our organization say our applications are migrated onto the cloud say the cloud service provider is offering a service say analytics we can subscribe to it and analytics will be available to us immediately and as our processes are available on the cloud say our business is integrating with other business so the application integrity happens within fraction of time and moving on to the another benefit the document control so whatever the processes the business the data that is migrated onto the cloud the audit of the data the audit of the processes will be securely maintained by the cloud computing service provider moving on to the next benefit is the security the cloud environment has a very enhanced security mechanisms these days we are also able to see security as a service the applications and the data stored are migrated onto the cloud will be provided with a very enhanced security and whenever a user a subscriber migrates onto the cloud the subscriber will get a service level agreement in the service level agreement the service provider will ensure the security will ensure that the data and the processes will not be used by the third party and the last and foremost important benefit of cloud computing is okay, location independent so sure, sir. Sure, sir. location is not at all a constraint uh -huh. and now when we migrate onto the cloud we can't say where okay, exactly sir. our data resides sure, sir. where exactly our process resides even the cloud Maharaj, service sir. provider fails to say the location of the data all the distributed data centers ah, of the India cloud service provider available across the globe can be used by the subscriber for storing his data in respect of the geo location so these are the major cloud computing benefits which ah. we get when we migrate onto the cloud moving on <coughs> మళ్ళీ రమ్మనండి సార్ అయిపోతుంది సార్ అయితే నో ప్రాబ్లం కదా ద కామన్ టెర్మినాలజీస్ దట్ వి యూస్ విత్ క్లౌడ్ కంప్యూటింగ్ ద వన్ ఈస్ క్లౌడ్ సర్వీస్ ప్రొవైడర్ I am using this word frequently. Yeah. Whom we call as a cloud service provider, an organization who provides the cloud infra, who provides the computing services through the cloud. We call them as cloud service provider. For example, Microsoft is one cloud service provider. 
Google is one cloud ah. service provider. Amazon is one cloud service provider. Ah. Salesforce is one cloud service provider. Okay. Like that we have n number of service okay. providers who provide variety of services okay. for us. The next important okay. terminology which we speak about is the cloud data center. A data center is ah. nothing but a place where the hardware infra interconnected infra is available awesome. and we call that particular place as uh -huh. a data center because it stores the data on sure. the underlying there commodity are, hardware are, which, are, which are, is interconnected uh, and then moving on to the third terminology commodity hardware already i mentioned it is nothing but the low cost hardware interconnected so that we can perform high performance computing with that low cost hardware and this is the commodity hardware which is used for building the cloud data centers and moving on utility computing cloud computing is called as an utility computing in simple we are not going to procure the it infra but we are going to subscribe to the it infra provided by the cloud service provider okay. and we pay for what exactly we use Fine. and the next important next terminology is ubiquitous computing so Fine. Fine. ubiquitous computing says anywhere anytime computing irrespective of the geolocation irrespective of the kind of device irrespective of the time we are able to connect to the systems the processes and the info so moving on by this okay. uh, we are able to understand what is exactly cloud computing what are the characteristics of cloud computing what are the challenges of cloud computing what are the benefits of cloud computing now how the cloud computing is used is used by the end users so when we see this from the cloud computing we have three types of the deployment models and three major types of the services offered by the cloud through internet coming to the services we come in where department nunchi response sorry Coming to the services, the first, the foremost service is infrastructure as a service. Then the second kind of service is platform as a service. And the third type of the service is software as a service. These are the major service models provided by the cloud computing. But they were not stopped at that. In recent times, if we could see, we also have storage as a service. We also have desktop as a service. We also have hardware as a service. We also have AI as a service. But majorly, as a beginner to understand, three major services provided by the cloud computing are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And people call service stack. In the service stack, always at the bottom comes with infrastructure as a service. And on the top of infrastructure as a service is the platform as a service. And on the top of that, we get software as a service. So I will be elaborating on this in the next coming slides. And then coming to the deployment models. So we have three different kinds of the deployment models. We call it as public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. We also have one more model. We call it as community cloud. So what is exactly the difference between a deployment model and a service model? Service model says what kind of computing service you are going to take. Are you in need of hardware computing? processing power are you in need of 
a deployment model where you can develop your own software or are you in need of a software which is readily available to use so these are the three different service models say infrastructure which speaks about underlying hardware whenever you are in need of underlying processing power or storage power platform layer say you know if you want to develop some project sir sure. you require to have an operating system you require to okay. have an application software like matlab you require to configure it having a database yes, behind and then on the top of that you are going okay. to develop your application finally deploy your application and on the top of that sometimes we want a software which is readily available say for our mailing we use gmail for our social connect we use facebook for our professional connect we use linkedin all these are nothing but software as a services so based on the kind of computing service we require we are going to subscribe to either iaas or paas or saas sometimes an organization or a user may subscribe even to all the three or sir. two among the three or one among the three now yes sir yes sir moving on to the deployment models so now to use these services we we okay. have to yes. migrate our processes okay. we have to migrate our data onto the cloud and okay. as already i mentioned cloud computing supports multi tenancy no, multi tenancy no, means no. when yes, more than no. one user or more than one subscriber will share the common computing service no, say no. common processing no. power say common deployment environment say no. common software like gmail all of us are going to use the common okay. gmail having our own user account but all our mails will be stored in the common database we call this as a multi tenancy now sure. the subscribers are very much concerned about the security and privacy of the data they want to migrate onto the cloud but they do not want to go with multi tenancy they want to use cloud computing services but they want they do not want to share the hardware with other subscribers there are some organizations who want to migrate onto the cloud they were ready to share get shared the computing resources there are some organizations who want part of their data process can be shared and part of their data process cannot be shared looking at this varied needs of the subscribers the cloud computing has come up with different kinds of deployment models say the first one public cloud public cloud supports multi tenancy the name itself says various subscribers use the cloud computing and share the underlying cloud services so an organizations where the security is the least concern they always go for public cloud moving on to the next important one that is private cloud an organization who want cloud services but do not want the multi tenancy do not want multi tenancy means do not want to share the cloud services cloud resources with other organization then they go for private cloud but as mentioned cloud computing is a utility model we pay for the use of the yeah. services we pay for the use of the resources yes, the cost sir, of the that. private yes, cloud will be very high when compared to the public cloud sir mute option wrong right. sir the security of the private cloud will be very high yeah. when compared yes, to the security of the public right. cloud so now and to reduce the, the operational right. cost of the cloud computing Naku. the cloud uh, fine sir okay computing service providers have come with the third deployment yeah, model no and they called it as a hybrid cloud yes sir yes what does this hybrid cloud says sir sure. it is a sure. combination of public cloud and Thank private you. cloud oh. as said an organization having their own processes and data and all the process and all the data may not require the same amount of security so 
the least secured data and processes can be kept on public cloud who share the resources with other organization and the organization and the data and processes with high security will be stored onto the private cloud so this is what we call it is a hybrid cloud and now the hybrid cloud ensures the security of the private cloud as well reduces the operational cost as incurred to the private cloud so moving on there is also a fourth deployment model and people call it as a community cloud as the name says community cloud an organizations of mutual interest mutual trust will share the cloud services and the resources and as the organizations are having mutual trust the security is not going to be a concern there a community cloud is same as public cloud but the sharing organizations have a mutual trust so the operational cost for the cloud of the cloud for the organizations will be drastically down and they actually enjoy the private cloud deployment model so moving on the cloud service model sorry my heading says uh, deployment models it is service models now what infrastructure as a service provides in simple it provides a simplistic view of it infra say <coughs> sorry say i require more processing power say i require more storage space say i require more number of instances i require more number of virtual channels for broadcasting in a short latency i can get all of them by using infrastructure as a service so all those complex it i can get just with a user interface and just by providing the required data then the platform as a service what does it, it provide it provides a very simplistic view of programming so as i said if you want to develop an application we always go for platform as a service and third one is simplistic view of resources services software as a service so as i said we are not worried about how gmail is developed we were not worried about the gmail versioning we were just worried about having a username and starts working it just get a credential and start using the service and which we call it as software as a service these three statements will give you a very clear understanding how the cloud computing has made the computing very simple so based upon your need we are going to subscribe to a particular service model so to elaborate here some users some company or some organization deploy their application onto on a cloud and they themselves will call as a cloud service provider means say i want to come up with a new email service like gmail and to have my mail service i want underlying hardware i want an underlying programming environment where i can deploy my application so for that i can subscribe to a cloud service provider who provides me required it infra who provides me required deployment environment and i use those cloud services and in turn i provide my application a mailing application as a software as a service to the society so means i myself is a cloud service provider providing mail service which is software as a service and in turn using the cloud services of other service providers who provide is providing infrastructure as a service and the platform as a service 
So here to understand, when we speak about multi-tenancy, people always think about hardware as multi-tenancy. But whatever the softwares which we are using, the softwares are also of two types, multi-tenant software and a single tenant software. Say for example, any software used by a single organization, we call it as a single tenant software. Say for example, an ERP of a college, which is not based, which is not on cloud. Say even TCS IAN provides ERP, but again it is a software as a service. Say for example, an ERP developed by a college and being used by that particular college itself, we call it as a single tenant software and it can't be called as a software as a service. But any software which is available to n number of organizations, n number of users, we call it as a software as a service. A simple example, as I already mentioned, Facebook, Gmail, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, Instagram, all these are software as a service. The common software, as a user, you just subscribe and we are going to use that particular common software and we call it as a software as a service. So moving on, so explaining more about uh, the cloud deployment models. So as I already said, private cloud, public cloud, community cloud, and hybrid cloud. The diagram gives you a better understanding. See here, private cloud, a single organization. Public cloud, more organizations are going to share. Community cloud, which says organizations who have shared interest, mutual trust. And combination of a private, public, or community cloud is nothing but an hybrid cloud. So this is the way how the cloud deployment models have come up. So moving on, the cloud computing provide players who are actually providing these services. You can just look at the cloudscape or the landscape. Many organizations are providing huge number of services, huge and huge number of services. <clears throat> say if you look into Amazon services, AWS services, sometime when you get just Google it and you can find 50 plus number of services are provided by just Amazon itself. Like the way Google is providing, like the way Microsoft is providing. You can see here in the slide, uh, few selected, these are the various software as a services and even the verticals are clear. These are all CRM softwares. These are all marketing and demand generation. These are the human resources, finance accounting, content management, and vertical management. So means for an organization, for their specific need, instead of worrying about developing their own application, there are softwares which are readily available as software as a service. Just subscribe to those software and start using it and get benefited. Then, See here, you know, the bottom line also, business intelligence, collaboration, e-commerce, marketing analytics, enterprise social media, even for advertisement as well. Huge number of, you know, software as a services have come up. Then, platform as a service. <clears throat> These are the various services which are available by using which we can develop our applications without worrying about making an environment ready integrating multiple softwares worrying about their licenses just ready to develop our applications ready to deploy our applications and on the bottom you could see the infrastructure as a service where we can get the required it infra in a fraction of time provided by the various service providers so this is the huge cloudscape cloud landscape available for the cloud subscribers to use which are the proven services. So moving on, as already I mentioned in the beginning, I just want to put my presentation at the fundamental. These days, even before getting an understanding of the cloud computing, people were speaking about uh, fog computing, people are speaking about edge computing, and there is a lot of confusion. Some says fog computing has come. So the cloud computing is over. Some started saying edge computing has come, fog computing has gone. 
but please understand it's not the case all these three are again interdependent as i have already i mentioned cloud computing is a distributed computing environment interconnected through a network and finally looks like a central computing environment now before the fog and edge computing has come when we are using the cloud computing environment for our processing and for our data we always need to connect through a network move to the data center where exactly our data and processes are available and we move all the data to the cloud and we get all the data from the cloud whenever we require now later the fog computing has come the fog computing is nothing but it is a distributed computing model which again connects to the cloud it helps in reducing the cloud latencies what does this fog computing says so now you have migrated onto the cloud or you are using the third party cloud services and for always for your data and processes you need to connect to the data center and get it back the fog says your computing your data will be available at your doorstep and this is what the distributing environment and now the fog reduces the amount of the data that has to be sent back to the cloud in simple the fog works like a cache the cache memory in your memory hierarchy and on the top of the fog computing has come an edge computing now nowadays whatever the applications which we are working most of the applications are iot applications now the most of the computing speaks about cyber physical machines what is this cyber physical machine we are now trying to convert all the mechanical machines as a computing machines how this is possible we are just connecting using the sensors and we are catching the data of those mechanical machines we are trying to take the control of those mechanical machines by using these iot's microcontrollers sensors etc and the collected data has to go back to our processes and the data so now edge computing the name itself says which lies in the edges connects to the sensors and the microcontrollers and where it collects the data and gives it to the nodes present with the fog and which actually moves back to the cloud data centers where the final data and the processes are available so now when someone say is working with iot applications and say iot application having its process stored on the cloud to have an effective application definitely the iot application has to use edge computing below that the fog computing to reduce the latencies and finally it has to use the cloud for performing the complex computing so here when i speak about complex computing the cloud can perform but the fog can't because fog is nothing but the nodes cloud is nothing but the data centers edge is nothing but just the devices who can sense the data and just the fraction of the bits of the data will be sent to the fogs who does the processing at the local but the simple calculations are the simple processing but finally the summarized one will move on to the cloud where the complex computing takes place so this is what the basic difference or the correlation between or the interdependency between the cloud fog and edge computing so moving on as students you might raise me a question how do i explore infrastructure as a service how do i explore platform as a service or how do i explore software as a service so the major service providers or the major cloud players as a csr they are supporting organizations and the students to explore the cloud services and to learn the use of cloud services so that the it industry will get benefited 
if you look at this current slide so it speaks about amazon web services at free of cost some basic services at free of cost for the students and educators and this you people can get by getting registered on awseducate.com amazon web services is providing a program known as aws educate so your faculty your principal or your department can register with aws educate once the registration is done the basic amazon web services cloud services like amazon ec2 amazon s3 etc are available at free of cost for the students you can explore and you can run your applications you can deploy your applications on the cloud moving on microsoft is another important player and microsoft also provides the azure services at free of cost for the students upon subscribing you can just look at the slide start building the future with azure for students get a dollar 100 credit when you create your free account with azure just sign in get registered with the microsoft live account dollar 100 credit services will be credited to your account where you can deploy your applications where you can create an instance where you can create your own virtual private network where you can get your underlying uh, it infra required where you can get an operating system of your choice so you can start exploring where even organization intervention is not required here with azure as a student you can just start using it and meanwhile there is another cloud service player salesforce they offer a program known as trial head by using which they provide their cloud services at free of cost to the students not just for the students even for the startup entrepreneurs they can build their applications on the trial head without paying a single penny to the salesforce until they go for commercialization like this every cloud service provider is having their offering at free of cost to the students so uh, i hope uh, after this session you all will uh, for your applications and for understanding cloud Sir. so uh, this is what uh, i thought okay. of sharing as a fundamental of cloud computing uh, to you all so now uh, i am available for any questions uh, and uh, thanks for listening to the session uh, patiently so i'm open for questions uh, organizers so participants if you have any questions please do type in your chat box so that the sir can answer over sir i have one question uh, yeah i'm having very first question now uh, which says where does the cloud store its backups and what embarrassment does the user get if his or her data is lost as i said uh, i try to put the session uh, very fundamental uh, all the cloud data will be stored in the cloud data centers which are available across the world for the service provider and speaking about the loss of the data as i mentioned cloud will follow a mechanism known as data replication the data replication says any data stored on the cloud will be maintained as three copies not just one copy so any single data stored uh, we are going to have the three copies of the data so if we lose one copy then the other two copies will be available but now still all the three copies are lost what to do as i mentioned when we subscribe to the cloud we have a service level agreement in the SLA, we mentioned, as I mentioned, one of the characteristic is availability. In the availability, the cloud service provider says 99.99% my services are available. Say sometimes the services are not available and you can't continue your business transactions so that it is a loss incurred to your business. Then the cloud servicer has to pay for that. And all these laws and policies will be maintained and mentioned in the service level agreement whenever you subscribe to the cloud. Uh, someone is saying, uh, sir, next session, uh, 
can you give a small example of use of cloud uh, definitely we can do that uh, 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 i can take uh, aws or i can take azure and uh, creation of an vpn i can do uh, but even uh, uh, you can find lot of lots of videos for the beginners to create your own instance to create your own infra uh, in youtube and you can use it and uh, if organize a schedule uh, i'm i'm ready to do that i'm ready to do that more questions any more questions hope it was not an uh, overhead transmission hello yeah mm. yes sir principal uh, so i found that uh, you covered very sir, well good evening sir yes sir good evening sir, good evening, sir. Uh, you have covered very well the basics very clearly very yes sir uh, detailed way you have explained the basics of cloud computing i think uh, all the students who are attending this course they should be very uh, familiar now with the, what is available and what is the need and uh, what is the purpose and all those aspects and some challenges and uh, benefits and uh, uh, i think uh, usage is the only way we can learn better uh, yeah. and uh, you also given the end at least uh, uh, what amazon or uh, microsoft or uh, salesforce are providing uh free software for students to explore i think the best way is to start exploring then only we can learn better or i don't know how many students have registered uh, whoever have registered mysura sir please follow up sir sure make uh, small projects of uh, this and uh, uh, i don't know how many students have uh, appeared but those who have in this uh, please uh, make attempt for uh, usage of cloud computing and make some notes and sir, sir, uh, the webinar is uh, fully recorded sir we will be sharing the video link to all the students so that they can view this uh, webinar in any time in case of doubts they can contact rajnikanth sir also that's a general statement but let there be specific people who are interested and who should do uh, reports of the usage of uh, clouds whatever simple ways learning is always Uh, excusable once you are sure. in the field uh, there is no excuse so now you can take chances and make your own reports of use of cloud uh, who are is interested uh, sure. at least few of them should be submitted sure that's my request uh, thank you sir sure. it went well sir congratulations sir uh, this has come sir okay hello sir Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I mean, the session it went well, sir. Uh, I mean, you covered all the basics uh, pretty much. Uh, I mean, uh, there will be a lot of demand also for cloud in the future, especially yes, nowadays we are seeing Azure and as well as AWS. Yes, uh, they are among the top uh, cloud providers, and most of the companies are actually switching over to cloud because servers yes. and all it's very expensive to maintain and. Uh, these companies they are uh, offering it at a very low price when small companies yes. are migrating yes sir so the organizations can actually concentrate on their core uh, you know uh, business and you know core mm -hmm. operations instead of concentrating on it and which is not their yeah. you know core uh, operation and it's a headache for them yeah i know i was talking to few company people and uh, what their uh, thought process what is their thought process is uh, if they are going for cloud they 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 can actually save 3 to 4 uh, resources in the company database administrator is not required server uh, administrator is not required and uh, data retrieval and all i mean most uh, i mean if we give the what do you call the template they'll only give and design design everything and they'll give it to the company so companies yes. are actually saving a lot of money by using cloud 
and even the cost incurred in purchasing that required hardware and maintaining that hardware and space for the hardware everything can be saved by the organization yeah, yeah. so very good uh, technology very good technology sir and Hope now it is uh, we can't we... yes sir. Uh, nothing sir go sure. ahead go ahead yeah nowadays you know uh, no one can say that you know computing is a problem for me the computing is available at our doorsteps whatever mm-hmm. the computing we want is available and various service providers are providing very sophisticated services and just uh, we have to yeah. work on our innovation our technology and our development and deployment so that's where uh, the cloud computing has landed now and uh, has become the backbone of computing environment across the world and now for any student in any company that gets placed definitely they are going to get exposed to the cloud computing environment only they are going to work only with the cloud services uh, this is what uh, my you know uh, experience mm. yes, sir i think it went uh... Thank you. It went well, sir. I hope all the students thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, enjoyed the lecture thoroughly. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Rajnikant sir. Nicely you have presented all the fundamentals of cloud computing. Uh, thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir. Uh, at the outset, I congratulate uh, the IEEE Student Branch Computer uh, Society Chapter uh, Advisor and IEEE Student Branch Sreyas. Uh, Counselor uh, Dr. Uh, Prasad sir and the students, particularly there are a few students uh, very much active in IEEE student branch, uh, Mysura and several other students. My appreciation and congrats to all. Thank you, Rajnikan sir, uh, once again for your beautiful you, and informative thank presentation. You. Hope uh, students uh, must have enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you, sir. So uh, I would like to I would like to thank the IEEE Hyderabad section and IEEE Computer Society chapter of Hyderabad for giving this opportunity and for the approval of IEEE Shreya Student Branch Computer Society chapter also. And I would like to thank our management for giving this opportunity to organize these events uh, in this pandemic time too. And I would, and finally I would like to thank uh, Rashmi Khan sir for giving away his time to conduct this event. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.